Ahasuerus was the firstborn son of Darius I and the grandson of Cyrus the Great through his mother Atossa, Cyrus's daughter. This line is also called the Achaemenid dynasty. The Persian Empire lasted more than 200 years, ending in 330 BC when it fell to Alexander the Great. Cyrus began to rule in 550 BC. After conquering Babylon in 539 BC, he decreed that the Jews taken into exile could return to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. Upon the death of his father, Ahasuerus became king and ruled over a vast kingdom of 127 provinces that stretched from India to Ethiopia. His throne was in Shushan, Hebrew for the Greek word Susa, the winter residence of Persian kings, Esther 1 verse 1 to 2. Immediately after Ahasuerus assumed the throne, he had to deal with a revolt in Egypt. One year later, he marched his army to Egypt and put down the rebellion. The Babylonians were willing to accept Ahasuerus as their ruler because he had already ruled for 12 years on behalf of his father. But they soon rebelled against him because of his policies. As a result, Ahasuerus attacked Babylon, tore down its temples and the golden statue of the Babylonian god Marduk, and murdered the priests who tried to impede the destruction. His thirst for power and control manifested itself when he unsuccessfully tried to subjugate Greece several times, despite his uncle's advice to the contrary. He was emotional, impulsive, and wicked, and he was the man Esther was forced to marry. King Solomon wrote, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, like the rivers of water, he, God, turns it wherever he wishes, Proverbs 21 verse 1. Just as God controls nature in his sovereignty and providence, he also directs rulers, as seen in the book of Esther. In Esther's day, the king of the vast Persian empire was Ahasuerus. He is called Xerxes in Greek and Xhyarsha in Persian. Some scholars believe Ahasuerus is a title meaning chief of rulers, while others believe it was the king's name. The king's character. It was said that Ahasuerus was extremely handsome, tall, and vigorous and looked every inch a king when seated on his white marble throne. Like many heathen monarchs of his day, he was extremely wicked. Apart from being filled with pride and vanity, Ahasuerus had a volatile temper that exploded without warning, unleashing a torrent of brutality on unsuspecting people within his kingdom. His huge harem served at his bidding. He made emotional promises without thinking and manipulated people to satisfy his personal whims without considering the consequences. He also loved to hold elaborate, opulent banquets. His first, held in the third year of his reign, hosted all the officials in the Median Persian Empire. It lasted 180 days in all, six months, as if that weren't enough. At the conclusion, he held a week-long party to display the glory and wealth of his kingdom to all his guests. On the final day of the banquet, with everyone completely intoxicated and pursuing the lusts of the flesh, he summoned the eunuchs to bring his wife, Vashti, into the banquet hall to show her beauty to the people and the officials. Although scripture does not reveal what this command entailed, it no doubt meant the worst type of humiliation possible for Vashti. She refused, knowing that to defy the king might mean her death, and she was removed as queen, never to be heard of again. When Ahasuerus's fury subsided, he found himself in need of a beautiful woman to replace Vashti. So he sent officers out to comb his kingdom and seize beautiful young virgins. Among those taken was a Jewish girl named Esther, who was reared by her cousin Mordecai. 
Esther was crowned queen, and Mordecai lingered inside the king's gate, monitoring Esther's welfare. While there, he overheard a plot to kill Ahasuerus and told Esther, who told the king, who had the traitors hung. The situations in our lives are not always to our liking, the places we must live, the people we must associate with, or the problems we encounter. And these things may not always be our fault. We may have been the victims of circumstances, or we may have made decisions which we thought were right but which have not worked out as we expected. Some people feel that way about their marriages, the woman, for example, who thought the man she married was a believer. She later found out that he had deceived her. His actions continually reflected his disinterest in the things of the Lord and caused her endless grief. There is a story in God's word that will encourage folks in adverse circumstances such as these. The man of the house was none other than the king of the greatest empire in the world of his day. The Jews called him Ahasuerus, the Hebrew form of his Persian name. Secular history knows him better by his Greek name, King Xerxes I who ruled Persia from 486 to 465 BC. His powerful empire spread from India to Ethiopia, Esther 1 verse 1. But that wasn't enough for him. The real passion of his life was to do what his father, Darius I, had never been able to do, conquer Greece. The word of God tells us that, in the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his princes and attendants, the army officers of Persia and Media, the nobles, and the princes of his provinces being in his presence. When he displayed the riches of his royal glory and the splendor of his great majesty for many days, 180 days. Esther 1 verse 3, 4. Such a high-level conference, lasting six months, had to be more than just a big party. It was probably a strategy session for Xerxes' forthcoming invasion of Greece. Secular history tells us that he began that invasion not long after this magnificent convocation in 481 BC. To conclude the conference, however, he planned seven special days of celebration and feasting, Esther 1 verse 5. When he was a little tipsy from his wine, he called for his beautiful queen, Vashti, so that he could show her off before his friends, Esther 1 verse 11. She refused to be made a public spectacle, and Ahasuerus was enraged. At the advice of his trusted counselors, he decided to depose her by royal decree, the law of the Medes and the Persians which could never be reversed, not even by the king himself, Esther 1 verse 19. It was a rash decision which he would live to regret, but Ahasuerus was known to be an impulsive and headstrong man. Besides that, he had more important things to do than worry about his harem. He was ready to conquer Greece. His armies were superior to theirs and the momentum of history was on his side. But in a succession of famous battles familiar to students of ancient history, Thermopylae, Salamis, Plataea, his military might was finally broken and he returned to his capital at Susa a beaten man. How he must have longed for the comfort and companionship of his deposed queen to soothe him in his shame and put his fractured ego back together. After these things, when the anger of King Ahasuerus had subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what had been decreed against her, Esther 2 verse 1. But it was too late. His decree was irreversible. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Comment your opinion.